Hello and welcome to this CBT Nuggets Exam Pack 7648, Upgrading Your Windows Server 2003 MCSA to Windows Server 2008 TS. My name is Tim Warner, and I'm happy and grateful to be your instructor for this series. In this nugget, we'll begin by setting our expectations to make sure that you have in fact purchased the right Nugget series. I want to make sure as your instructor that you're happy beginning in the middle, and at the end of watching this series of nuggets. I'll then walk you through all of the nuggets in the series and show you how I put it together for maximum effect, that is to say to make sure that you're able to pass your upgrade exam as quickly and efficiently as possible. And then to that end, I'll share with you some useful exam strategies that I think will be very helpful both in your preparation as well as when you sit down in front of that computer at your local testing center and knock over that 7640 exam. Now then, who is the preferred audience for this particular exam pack? I'm looking at my ideal student as someone who's currently a Microsoft Certified Systems Administrator, or MCSA, in Windows Server 2003. If you're not an MCSA and you're just watching this Nugget series to get more up to speed on Windows Server 2008, hey, that's great. That's wonderful. You'll definitely achieve that goal by watching my Nuggets. Welcome to you. Sit back. Enjoy the ride. And you'll be able to apply lots of new skills. But I do have to tell you, this Nugget series was constructed specifically with your exam success in mind for exam 70-648. The upgrade from the systems administrator in Server 03 to the technology specialist in Server 08. Now, the way Microsoft's new frontier or current generation certifications work are that if you pass one technology exam, and it doesn't have to be just in Server 08, it could be in Windows Vista, it could be in Microsoft SQL Server 2005 or SQL Server 2008 could be in Visual Studio Technologies if you're a developer, could be SharePoint Server Exchange, you get the idea. If you pass a single technology exam, instead of becoming in the old school an MCP, you now become a Microsoft Certified Technology Specialist or MCTS. Now that's a good thing for many reasons in my opinion. In the old days, it wasn't clear if you just said that you were an MCP what your skill set was in. So you could send in a resume for a job and say, well, for instance, my name's Tim Warner, I'm an MCP. And the HR manager or the hiring manager would say, okay, and what is your specific platform technology? Nowadays, you can put on your business card or your resume or whatever, I'm an MCTS in, for instance, Active Directory Configuration, Network Infrastructure Configuration, SQL Server 2008 Database Development, etc., so getting back to the 7648 exam, this again is a bridge exam for those who already have the MCSA title. Once you pass this test, you actually earn two MCTS certifications. So this blood, sweat, and tears, not to mention money, you're investing in studying for the 648 exam will pay off by giving you not one, but two new certifications to put up on your wall. You'll earn the MCTS in Windows Server 2008 Active Directory Configuration, as well as your MCTS in Network Infrastructure Configuration. To complete your credential, because you'll remember, MCSA is kind of the mid-tier credential in the Windows IT Pro space. There's at the lowest level, or the associate level, the MCP. Then in the mid-level, there was the MCSA, and then in the top level, with Windows Server 2003, you had the Microsoft Certified Systems Engineer, or MCSE. The analog to MCSE in Windows 2008 is called the Microsoft Certified IT Professional, or MCITP. Now, I know this seems confusing, everybody. It kind of is. It's just Microsoft's latest routine or regime in their certification deal. Let me scrunch a URL over in the corner here. I'm sorry I don't have a lot of room on my whiteboard. If you point your browser to microsoft.com forward slash learning, 
That's the URL you need to know to read in detail about the new generation of Microsoft certification. Just hit up microsoft.com forward slash learning. You can learn all about the TSs and the ITPs, or if you're a developer, there's the Microsoft Certified Professional Developer, or MCPD, and so on. But anyway, as it happens, there's actually two top-tier IT Pro credentials. There's the MCITP Server Admin and the MCITP Enterprise Admin. The Server Admin is kind of the lower level of the top-tier credential, and the MCITP is the ultra-high level. So consider the Server Admin to be the, let's say, the Corvette, and the MCITP to be the Ferrari. To earn your MCITP Server Admin, after you pass your 648, it's just one more exam. You'll have to take your Pro Exam, your 7646, and after you've done that, you're finished. You'll become an MCITP Server Admin, and you can stop there and consider yourself a top-tier Microsoft IT professional in Windows Server 08. All right, you got that? So starting as an MCSA, 648, 646, and you're done. Now, if you're like me and you're a completist, you have a touch of OCD, <laughs> you might want to go for the MCITP Enterprise Admin. That's a little bit more work. You still have to do your 648 bridge exam. Don't worry about 646. You don't need to worry about that. After 648, you'll have to do 7643, that will give you a TS, an application infrastructure. You'll have to do a client exam. You can do 7620 or 7624. Each of these will also give you a TS. Note that you don't have to do them both. It's one or the other. 620 is the standard Windows Vista support exam. It's the direct descendant of the old Windows XP support exam. I think the number for that one was 7270. Now that was a bear of an exam. I'm sure you took that old XP support exam if you hold the MCSA in Windows 2003. 624 is the Deploying Windows Vista Desktops in Office 2007. I've taken both of these exams. 624, there's a lot to know. It's not a tough exam, but there's a lot to know. 620, I have to just tell you frankly, person to person, is astoundingly and embarrassingly easy. So given these two, just person to person, I would highly recommend you go 7620 here. And then finally, after you take your two TS prerequisites, you can finish with a flourish by taking your pro level exam, that's 7647, to complete your ITP Enterprise Technician, excuse me, MCITP Enterprise Admin. So that's a grand total of how many exams? 648 is 1, 643 is 2, 620 is 3, 647 is 4. Let's spend a couple minutes looking at how I constructed this series for you. As you see, there's 22 nuggets, also called screencasts, that make up this exam pack. My driving forces behind creating or architecting this series were as follows. Number one, I structured these screencasts, or these nuggets, to match exactly to Microsoft's stated exam objectives. So if you do a Google search for 70-648 and go to the Microsoft.com exam preparation page, and you go to the skills being measured area of that page, you should find a line-by-line -line matchup between the topics that I've broken out here in this outline and the topics that are at Microsoft.com. Because I'm an instructor, but I'm also a student. And I know as a student, there's always the fear, am I covering all the objectives that I'll potentially see when I go in that exam room? Number two on my priority list was making sure that the ordering of the nuggets makes sense logically. After the overview movie, you see that we look at most of the flavors of Active Directory. We look at Active Directory lightweight directory services, we then go into rights management services, federation services. We sprinkle in the read-only domain controller. Some topics were too large to cover in one nugget, so I spread them over two nuggets. You see backup and restore is broken into two, 
certificate services was broken into two. Then we come down to network services, routing, IPv4, IPv6, IPsec, remote access, network access protection. There's quite a bit of stuff that's brand new, quite a bit of stuff that was carried over from later versions of Windows Server 2003. We'll talk about that in just a second. And some stuff that you might be thinking to yourself, boy, haven't I already mastered this in Windows Server 2003? I want you to know, friends, that I'm going to attempt to bring as much light to our discussion as possible. That is to say, I want this series to be educational in two ways. One, I'm going to bring as many exam tips and exam strategies to this series as possible. I'm going to make sure to separate the wheat from the chaff. I mean, take administering DHCP. I'm very well not just going to start from zero and start a consideration of DHCP as if you know nothing of it, because you're already MCSAs. You should already know some stuff about DHCP. So don't expect that you'll have to sit through 10 or 15 minutes of elementary information that you already know. On the other hand, I'm going to try to sprinkle in information that you may not have known, especially stuff that's new in Windows Server 2008. So expect a lot of exam-specific exam strategy tips and also expect real-world implementation tips that you can take in the field in your practice as systems engineers. Speaking of exam strategies, why don't I share with you some of the exam metadata with you so you have a better picture of some of the technical aspects of that Microsoft Exam 70-648. I'll tell you right off the bat, CBT Nuggets products are never brain dumps and will never violate our non-disclosure agreements, or NDAs. However, we will get up pretty close to the limits of those NDAs in the aim of helping you, as much as possible, prepare and pass those certification exams and gain your career goals in industry. Now, 7648 is, like any recent upgrade exam from Microsoft, not a separate pool of questions. What you're going to find on this exam, everybody, is that Microsoft takes a selection of questions from, in this case, two separate exams, and actually has you run them back to back. Does that make sense? In other words, you'll get 55 questions approximately total with a 700 out of 1,000 pass score. That's tr pretty traditional for a Microsoft exam. But these are individually timed testlets. So you'll have approximately 27 questions from exam 7640. That's the Active Directory Configuration exam. And you'll have approximately 28 questions from exam 7642. That's the Network Infrastructure Configuration exam. So in other words, you'll first work through these 27 or so items individually timed. So your timer's ticking, however many minutes you'll get for that bank. You need to finish those questions within that timer. Finish, commit, move to the next bank, and you'll never ever be able to go back to the initial bank of AD config questions again. You see how that works? These two test banks are islands unto themselves. Now, common question, do you get a score separately, pass-fail separately? No, that wouldn't make sense, would it? You're given one score at the end of the whole 55 questions. Unless Microsoft changes something, at this point, all of the questions are multiple choice, no simulations. In fact, that seems to be the trend. Microsoft, maybe they're just so busy they don't have time to program some of those more robust and comprehensive items that we saw back in the Windows Server 2003 days. You know, the interactives, the drag and drops, the create a trees, the place of targets, the case studies, the simulations. We see fewer and fewer of those in current Microsoft exams. The last thing I'd like to discuss with you before we close down this introductory nugget and get into the material itself is I want to give a brief nod to Windows Server 2003 R2. It's amazing that when I'm in the classroom, in the field, actually in the, when I'm in the field or in the classroom, I'm amazed how many administrators are either A, unaware of the R2 release of Windows Server 2003, or B, are dimly aware of it, but just have never bothered with it. I shouldn't be so amazed when I'm out in the field, because when I'm out in the field, I myself, too, have so many...
Thank you.